Hello, hi everybody. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Angela. Morning, hey, everybody. Bobby. Hey, Sean. Uh, sorry for the confusion, Tracy. Uh, I thought I was in the wrong room, so I uh, just because. All right, welcome everybody to the December first Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Um, as you are all aware, uh, you've been on this call before. Two things that we must abide by: the first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, so as far as announcements go today, we have the standard announcement of the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. Uh, if you have something that you want to include in that newsletter, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. Any other announcements that anybody has or would like to make? Yeah, Angelo. Uh, so uh, probably this and uh, this this thing will not be of interest for many, but I just wanted to take the chance because I uh, I didn't run again for uh, for the, the the TOC. I just want to take the chance. Uh, you know, you never know to to say thank you to everybody. I really enjoyed all the discussion. I learned a lot also from the interactions that we had in the past uh, um, in the past years. So a really big thank to uh, to everybody for this opportunity and for this great experience. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Angelo. And yes, thanks for being on the TOC for the last year. Um, it's been it's been great to have a voice uh, that is uh, curious and interested about what's happening in the technical space. So um, thank you for that. Any other other announcements that anybody would like to make? All right, uh, so speaking of the uh, upcoming TOC and the election, uh, the election did close yesterday. I saw that we had 77 votes that came in. Um, about 39% of the people who were eligible did vote for the, the Technical Oversight Committee. Um, so it's somewhat disappointing that we moved to uh, maintainers only, people we thought would be interested in voting for the upcoming technical oversight committee folks uh, to not see a larger number there, um, but maybe we'll have to do some um, some conversations with some of the people who didn't vote to see why they didn't vote and uh, what we could do differently in the future. Um, we do not have the results yet because the next step is that the governing board, as you recall, has to elect uh, five people, uh, five additional people to the list of technical oversight committee members. And so that will be um, starting here shortly. Um, I know the staff is working on getting the information gathered from what, uh, what the results were and also putting together some information on uh, the individuals that, uh, that we have as far as diversity and, and things like that. So, um, Probably mid-December is when we'll see the results coming back in uh, for the next year's technical oversight committee. And uh, we'll get that out there as soon as it's available. After that, uh, as you are probably all aware, um, the next steps would be to elect the TOC chair and vice chair. Arno. Yes, hi everybody. Thank you, Tracy. No, I just wanted to comment on the election process. I think, you know, given the low numbers of vote, I think we didn't have to wait a month. I don't know when people actually voted. If uh, we had said, okay, you have two weeks to vote, it doesn't feel like we would have lost a lot. I don't know that for a fact, obviously, but uh, especially given the, the additional stage of having to go to governing board, I think, you know, two week uh, period to vote, to cast the votes, probably was good enough. But so we might want to think about that in the future. All right, thanks Arno. I will tell you that probably a third of the people voted this week. Um, a third of the people who <laughs> actually voted. I think it went from 50 uh, to 77 in, this week. So um, I don't know if that's yeah, just but because that's we because... pushed people 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? right? <laughs> we, so, you know, we push people, people to vote because it People just procrastinate or... until the last moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Yeah, uh, point completely taken. hear you though, Arno. Uh, yes, and your point is taken as well. So um, thank you for that. All right, any other uh, comments on just the, the technical oversight committee election or any other, other announcements that people have? Hey Tracy, um, so I know like previously we refrained from doing it, but since this time the election was focused um, only to maintainers, can we this time uh, do some, I mean the analytics is visible to us and who has voted, who has not voted. Can we um, try to get feedback from them, the maintainers who are not participating? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, Arun. I think um, you know, just reaching out and seeing if we can get a summary of why they didn't vote. Um, you know, I don't know what those choices might look like if we were to do a choice sort of thing, or if it's just an open-ended question, tell us what, why you didn't vote. Um, but I, I do think it's worthwhile to to see and um, understand, right, what, what what the reasoning is for that. All right, any other uh, comments or announcements? All right, not seeing any. Uh, we did, we haven't met for about a month. Um, and so we have a number of quarterly reports that did come in in the past month. And uh, as I was going through them this morning, I didn't see any open or outstanding questions about any of those reports. It looks like all the questions that were asked were answered or um, any comments that were made were updated in the, the actual report. But did anybody have any questions or anything that we should talk to uh, the, the communities about related to their quarterly reports? Okay, I will take that as a resounding no. Uh, <laughs> the upcoming reports, we did get the cello report that came in uh, already this week. So um, that one's available. The URSA report, um, it's probably worthwhile to uh, have a conversation with the, the URSA team. I know they just gave us their Q3, Q3 report um, not too long ago. Uh, and so it may be that they're not thinking about the Q4 report yet. So we'll just have to um, maybe reach out to them and see, and see what the status is there. Uh, and then for next week, the reports that we're looking to get, and I think these are the remainder of the reports for the year are the Bay Zoo Caliper and Firefly reports. All right, uh, any, any questions on any of the reports before we move on to the discussion items? Okay, so for discussion uh, today, I wanted to talk about the status updates for the task forces that we've kicked off uh, for this particular year. I, I wanna see kind of what we're waiting on, how do we close these out? Uh, is there anything that can be done to, to move us beyond where we're at uh, to move these forward? Um, you know, I, I, there was another task force that we had which I ended up closing out um, because uh, what we decided was that it was really the, the staff decision as far as you know what gets priority and how do we present this. However, I do recall from that task force that one of the things that was we were waiting on was to see some mock-ups for some of the uh, new web pages. And so, um, I don't see Mr. Boswell on the call today um, to, to give us an update on that, but I think that's one of the things that we are waiting for just to, to see how we link the different projects together on the website. Oh, you are on the call, David. How did I miss you? Oh, you were at the top uh, co-host. Um, yeah. David, do you have any updates on that? Yeah, quick update on that. Unfortunately, this gotten tied up with some web dev, other web dev issues on the site. 
the plan was to launch it on the current site uh, earlier this year in time for Global Forum, but then the web dev team decided that it would probably be best to wait. Um, long story short, the, there's going to be a redesign of the site early next year where the site moves to a different plat hosting platform. And so the web dev team didn't ultimately decided it didn't make sense to code it once for WordPress and then have to recode it just a few months later for a different platform. So their recommendation was to hold off and do that when we launch the new site. And sorry for not providing an update sooner. We've just been trying to sort out the exact timing and details on our end and all of that is not yet fully final on our end, but the web dev team did decide it did make the most sense not to go ahead and do it on WordPress. So um, we'll give you updates soon when we know more of timing, but uh, uh, it will be a little bit later than we had hoped in terms of getting it posted. All right, thanks David for that update um so yeah let's go through the the other task forces then and see where they're at and what can we do to get them closed out or move them forward um so the first one is the project gaps task force uh dano i know we had done a lot of discussions about um you know what kind of projects we have what kind of projects we don't have what labs exist that might fill in some of the gaps uh where are we at specifically with this task force and what do we need to do to, to move this forward? So the uh, the goals was to produce a list of labs that would go in and possible holes. And on the page, the recommendations um, delivered on those back in August. We kept it open over Hyperledger Global Forum in case some of the chatter at the Global Forum prompted us to add more uh, entries or gaps or whatever to the, to the list and, and none of those surfaced. So, you know, based on the objective set out when we formed the task force, it's delivered its its product, which was that recommendations page. Okay, so we can then move this to the uh, prior task force list uh, as far as what it has, uh, where we're at with that. Um, Correct. So we can take that action to do that. Okay, great. Thanks, Dano. Uh, Jim, the project health dashboard. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Um, so this one, I think we originally set this up to uh, deliver um, some automated uh, content into each of the project reports. Um, uh, we achieved the the first step of identifying what needs to go in there uh, to re reflect um, accurately with data uh, the the uh, the project health. Um, but we haven't achieved this, uh, the initial goal of doing the automation. Um, it's mainly due to resource uh, constraints, um, coding, um, coding wise and setting up infrastructure. Um, but we did manage to give the, the output to the Linux Foundation Insight team as input uh, for their future enhancements. Um, so, I think we have the option of closing this off with the reduced scope and just consider the um, the the output being just the report itself. And then we can always choose to act on that uh, in the future uh, when we do have resources available. Okay. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about with this in another conversation that I had um, was around whether or not we wanted to um, have some sort of, you know, let's call it a spreadsheet for sake of ease, um, that basically provides a list of things that we would expect from projects. Uh, things like uh, maintainers files, uh, these are the easy things, right? Things like maintainers files, contributor files, things that talk about how do you become a maintainer, um, you know, all of the basically good practices or best practices for, um, for being a successful kind of open source project. Uh, and then just a, you know, kind of a check mark, yes or no next to it. I know right now we're kind of doing that in the project reports, um, but I'm wondering if there's a, a different way for us to do that and kind of have it all in one location. Um, and basically something that we could maintain as we kind of go through uh, and see these things getting completed or, or finished. 
Uh, it's not quite the same, uh, I think, as what this dashboard uh, was and is intended to be within Insights, but I'm wondering if it does help us in some way just to, to be able to understand kind of these, these best practices, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I think the, uh, the report uh, that we ended up with can be easily turned into a express sheet format, and, and I, I'd be happy to help with that, uh, so we can have that sort of as a self, either as a self evaluation or as a um, center format for projects to self, self report on their health uh, uh, matrices. Yeah, I can I can definitely help with that as sort of the last step to uh, to wrap this up. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, yeah, and I know, uh, Hart, I think this is coming out of some of the conversations you and I had as well about some of the things that we'd like projects to be able to to be able to uh, have related to the documentation of how their projects are run. Um, and I think this these are the two things that came together in my head to create kind of this spreadsheet of check marks of yes, no um, sorts of things, uh, maybe even pointers to where those things are. Uh, if you will, so that people can easily find uh, where things are documented, because I don't feel like we're very consistent across our projects and where we document some of these things. Um, some of them have them uh, in maintainers files, some of them have them in contributors files, right? So like there's there's just different places where things are captured and I just wanna make sure that we have a, um, you know, a, a one place kind of to go look and see how our projects are doing and uh, maybe you know, a directory for people who are interested in getting involved in certain projects. Totally agree, Tracy. Thanks for bringing this up. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else then on project health dashboards that we should, um, that anybody has any commentary on? Um, hi, it's Dave. Uh, I agree with your points about consolidating that information. And there's also a few of the questions that are in each of the project's reports that, that have been there for like most of the year and mm -hmm. people would just copy paste, I think. So it'd be good if those things got moved to the common spreadsheet or the common page or however we do it. And then the project reports maybe just link to that. And you can say, do you have any updates on the common page, that type of thing? Yeah, I think that's a, a really good idea, Dave. I, I saw similar sorts of, I was thinking similar sorts of things when I was looking at some of the newest reports that came in. It's like, oh, that looks very similar to what I saw last, last time they reported, right? Um, so yeah, I'm agreeing with the copy paste and how that might just, uh, you know, some of the stuff is, is just not needed there in the project reports anymore. All right, anything else then on this particular topic? All right, uh, so then the last task force that we have is the security task force. Um, so Arun, I know you've been hosting some meetings. I uh, wanted to see if we could get an update from you on what the status is and um, what kind of steps we are taking or need to still take to get this one closed out. Sure, Tracy. Um, hey, everyone. So um, in terms of update, um, we still stand at the same place as what was updated in the previous TOC call, which is where um, we have certain action items that were supposed to be uh, written down. For instance, in our initial proposal, we had the easy targets achieved. But after that, um, taking the feedback from the TOC, we went back and then we refined the other proposals. And out of those proposals, um, like the after multiple discussions we realized that some of the open ssf recommendations are to be proposed over here in hyperledger for um, to, to for immediate implementation i apologize because i haven't been able to follow up since the global forum event um, but yes um the the task force itself has um, completed for now the tasks that were to be done however um, the 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 one of the proposal that we had as part of the task force itself is security is not one time activity which we should be reviewed and then once we put up these 10 or 15 items that it's done but rather it should be continuously evaluated as well right 
So um, that is an open item, which I still see um, that we end up discussing. For instance, in the previous call as well, I not brought up a, a, a tool that we should be leveraging in our build process, uh, the SNIKE tool reports, right? Um, so that's where we stand right now. And currently the task force meetings have been canceled, the Tuesday meetings, uh, I guess there was a conflict and then um, now the rescheduling of that is not done because I was occupied in the past month. I again apologize for that. Yeah, that's the current status. I know the problem Okay. Arnold? Um, so there is, sorry, on the SNIKE tool that are not brought up, I was not, not also aware of that, but um, the next foundation has already provided that in the in the uh, dashboards that are available for all the projects. Um, the, the discussion that we had in the previous task force meeting was to um, go through that and then uh, recommend how the projects teams can start using that. I, we already saw some of the project teams have been taking measures to mitigate some of those risks reported by the tool. I'm not sure if those reports were shared through this tool or through some other means. Like the tool has captured uh, those status as well. Okay, or no? Yes, uh, so, you know, I... I, I... <laughs> I claim uh, responsibility or I take responsibility for having started this. Uh, I still feel like we have a lot to do in that space. And uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I, really, I don't think you have to apologize. We all get busy at times and that's okay. I mean, you know, I thank you for trying to beat this anyway. But, uh, you know, it, I, we started this uh, that was based on my report that the OpenSSF had uh, produced uh, a guide for on you know for open source project and how to handle uh, vulnerability disclosures and then you know I'm very much involved in open SSF these days and I can tell you that the list of tools and, and, and recommendations keep increasing all the time and I think in general you know especially given the space we are in with blockchain which is pretty security sensitive I mean, those recommendations are true for any open source project, but, you know, I, as I was saying, j just if anybody should care, it should be us because in a blockchain space, we care about security and maybe more than anybody else. And so I think we, there's a lot to learn from the recommendations The you know, uh, Arun was referring to some of the tools that are being, you know, pointed to. There are some that are actually uh, developed by OpenSSF itself that help you know track uh, the packages, for instance, that you're using in your in your software, and it will alert you automatically if there's a vulnerability that has been disclosed in one of the or found in one of the packages you depend on. There's GitHub actually is also starting to provide some of those tools, but then then it's turned on by default, and sometimes it's just a matter of going change the the you know your github uh, settings to get to use those new features and and the other part is you know uh, a lot of this has to do with uh, providing attestations about you know ensuring the provenance of the tools and so again oh, the software we're developing so that people can use them knowing that they are actually using the genuine version and stuff like this so there's a whole array of things that need to be done that, you know, as we say nowadays, is like to improve the security posture of our projects. And so I think this, you know, this task force is still very much needed. We have to come up with, you know, I see this as a way to try to, you know, go through all these different options that are being brought up and recommendations and try to figure out how, what it means for us at Hyperhedra. And so that we can then turn around, you know, and tell our community, our different projects, okay, these are guidelines that we really want you to follow. All right, makes sense. Hart? I agree with Arno. I think we have, you know, we have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, this, uh, I, I, you know, 
I expect this will be a fairly long term effort, uh, but in the, the near future, you know, we'd like to get, uh, you know, more precise bug bounty programs rolled out. Uh, and we'd also like to, you know, formalize a security audit process, uh, as well as, you know, trying to, I don't know if standardize is the right word, but trying to help formalize uh, CV, I guess, even if we can't mandate them, CV best practices. So I totally just want to briefly agree with what Arno said. Okay, so it sounds to me, if I'm hearing correctly, that we've still got some work to do and it's going to be around documenting guidelines and best practices for uh, security, um, potentially implementing some programs within the Hyperledger Foundation as a whole. Is there, um, with, with the first part, uh, how much of what's being done in open SSF is applicable to that or are we creating separate from open SSF? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the what the relationship is between Hyperledger Foundation and open SSF and in, in this kind of task force. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're we're trying to get people to adopt the best open SSF practices, right? Right now we don't have any formal policy, say, on CVE disclosure, right? Uh, and we, when we talked about that last time earlier this year, uh, you know, people uh, were hesitant uh, to follow the open SSF best practices. Um, so, yeah, but so I agree. I mean, it's not about cre creating our own policies per se or, or our own guidance. It's really, you know, deciding which ones we want to adopt uh, and, 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 and what tools we want to leverage. That, so that we can recommend that to the projects in Hyperledger. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, so then I guess we keep the, the security task force open uh, for now uh, as we determine what those open SSF best practices are that we want to adopt and what the tools are that we want to, to recommend uh, to our different projects. All right, any other comments on the security task force? Any other things that we should be considering or thinking about here? All right, I'll take that as a no. Um, so if we go back to the agenda, uh, we do you have some sections at the bottom of the agenda about uh, new project proposals and then um, kind of our backlog of issues. So Sean, if you wouldn't mind going back to the agenda. Uh, so we've got the HLF operator HIP that's been proposed. Uh, I, I will let you know that there are conversations that are ongoing between uh, the submitter of this proposal and the Bevel community. Um, the results of those are yet to be determined, um, but I I want to leave this open until some sort of um, decision is made as to whether or not it makes sense to bring this into the bevel operators or um, what direction this is going to take. Um, so for for now, this is going to to remain open. Hopefully, we can. Uh, continue to report back on those discussions and how they're proceeding uh, for additional um, for additional meetings that we might have. Uh, and then for the backlog items, we do have this one open issue, which is uh, what spawned the security task force, um, which is to update the security process for Hyperledger. I, I'm. I'm not sure what to do here since we kind of have two threads, one which is this issue and one which is the task force. Do we leave the issue open until the task force is completed? Uh, or do we close this with the, we created the task force to handle it? I, I'm, I'm looking for some sort of direction or thoughts on kind of this backlog item. 
happy to keep it open, but also uh, don't want to leave it there if it's just uh, creating noise. Any thoughts that anybody has here? Hart? Hey, Tracy. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the task force mandate is suge to suggest updates to this. Um, so I think it's fine if we roll it into the task force. Okay. Any objections to that? Anybody who thinks it should be should remain open separately? Arun? Right, not an ob objection itself, but um, I, I don't know how to put it better, but uh, the project team who proposed here, they did reach out on a chat and they were asking for comments as well. They were asking me to review and then um, make some comments and get involved. Um, so I know like there are personally, but when I looked into some of the available labs, there were, I guess there is one more operator project or maybe two more operator. And within Hyperledger already incubated projects, we do have one um, project that does make use of operator concept. And then there is Bevel. So, um, um, I mean, we are already in a phase where there are, um, so would my, my question, like what I'm trying to get towards is, would Fabric team be willing to um, participate in these discussions? Because most of these are kind of tying to Fabric as well. At least that's where the confusions and other questions are arising. As far as I know, at least uh, the except for Bevel, which provides integrations for multiple other platforms, most of the other operators that we see are all on the Fabric. So can we have Fabric team involved and I mean, help us understand what the direction that uh, team is taking from the fabric side versus which of these tools is more ready for that adoption in future changes. And um, I know unifying may not be straightforward because of the complexity that I already mentioned. Bevel supports multiple other platforms and most of the others are like operators only for fabric. Uh, but at least the guidance from fabric team would be helpful. Uh, hi, this is Dave. Yeah, I can help and or get somebody from the the Fabric team to help with this. All right, thanks, Dave. Um, so we'll make sure to to include you in some of the conversations that are ongoing uh, that we have. Uh, and Arun, you had jumped us back in the <laughs> um, conversation. I was uh, we were actually talking about closing out the the security um process updating the security process and the backlog items um so i was asking if anybody had any objections to closing that one um so happy to take us back there but arun uh point taken on the hlf operator and i will make sure that we're including other folks in those conversations and this is a topic that i'm personally interested in as well and invested in as well so I want to get involved. Okay. So related to the going back to the backlog item, then um, any any objections to us closing this out as being included in the task force, the security task force? Well, so it, it's really a, a matter of you know kind of accounting how you want to do deal with it. I mean, as long as we have the task force, I guess it's okay to close it. So we are not going to lose sight of it. But to me, it's this is kind of like the issue and the task force is the way we are going to come up with the answer that will allow us to close this. That's the way I thought about it, but I have no problem closing it. And, yeah, I know. I, I see where you're at, right? Like we shouldn't actually close the issue until it's been uh, resolved. Yeah, um, that's that is kind of where you're at. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. All right. So the the scale is now balanced. Uh, in my mind, I don't have a preference for either way. Uh, <laughs> we've heard one for closing, one for leaving it open. 
Um, <laughs> any other people have any thoughts on this? Um, otherwise, I think I will lean towards leaving it open because uh, the, that the the scale is slightly towards that one. I would also tip the scale to leaving it open. I think it's good to have a All reminder right. that this is what we need to come back to from the task force. All right, somebody put their thumbs up. I don't know who that was. So Peter, you did. Okay. Um, so we'll leave it open then for now. Uh, so that's the, we went through the entire agenda. Any other topics that we should be discussing uh, as we uh, finish today's meeting, Arun? Yes. Um, so this topic came fresh in because I I got to attend one of the event and blockchain related event and, and Bangalore today and um, I would like to see something like that uh, within Hyperledger ecosystem as well and what fascinates me over there is in terms of uh, the the developer relationships in, in making onboarding uh, uh, developer ecosystem making their experience much smoother I know this has been brought up in the past uh, the approach from Hyperledger would be a little different but um, if if there are opportunities for us to um, open up in, in a multiple ways, I think we should start looking for partnerships or engagements in that aspect. And um, this could be from multiple angles. For instance, um, the majority of developer ecosystem comes from, uh, from let's say, the, um, the a certain age group, which would much closer, which would be much closer to uh, uh, universities, right? So they would be looking for. Um, a quick contributions or a, a kind of project involvement that they would personally want to be involved in. And I'm not again talking about the mentorship program, but rather uh, those who are highly motivated and enthusiastic who would go and explore on their own and willing to contribute at, at their own phase. Um, so this particular community group is especially uh, large and once they let's say get gain that experience they will carry that forward to further um, uh, uh, people from their reach and this has been a success story for for at least other groups and uh, i mean if there are open opportunities for us to propose some things and like engage in any way happy to do that um, yeah that's all Um, so I'm not quite sure that I'm understanding what you're suggesting. Um, right. but so I, I, I'll, I'll probably put it in a much other other way, right? So um, engaging university students, especially when they are towards their towards end of their courses, or people who are looking out for real world experience, people who are looking out for open source contributions, and they are highly motivated. They are the um, like the developers uh, group who are or willing to learn on their own. Now, the investment from our side would be in terms of making sure we have right materials available for them, right um, trainings available. And this may also require, for instance, Hyperledger Foundation to be engaged with certain universities and, and prepare course materials if needed, or probably engage in, in creating workshops. Um, uh, right, so um, this is what I was trying to go towards. Engaging university students is really beneficial for a community growth perspective and also in terms of adoption. Okay, I'm gonna let uh, Hart comment. I, I think there's already some things that are ongoing, but uh, I'll see if Hart mentions those or not. Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so Arun, we definitely have university uh, student engagement as a goal. Um, you know, there's only so much we can do, obviously, like putting together a, uh, a full university course is difficult, uh, particularly, you know, like a real uh, thing. We have been, um, we have been working on this, though. And, and if you have suggestions, uh, you know, we, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so, you know, just, just reach out uh, if you think that there's something we can do. Um, we, you know, in the same vein, we are going to try to, uh, um, 
I, I guess revamp isn't the right word, but we're going to try to, you know, update the mentorship program as well uh, to um, help uh, handle more university students and more university interns as well. Um, so, yeah, we'd love to hear from you on, uh, you know, if you don't mind, you know, like writing this up in, in some kind of email or something and then, and then just mailing to us, that would be fantastic. Because um, we're always looking for feedback and opportunities on this kind of thing. One thing that I uh, know was happening is some, some work with Morgan State University um, for some of the kind of conversations about what it is that we're doing in Hyperledger. And that was the one example that I was going to bring up. Um, Hart, I don't know if you had a comment on that. Yeah, so our so contact straight person, up. sorry, Tracy, our contact person at Morgan State left. Uh, so that's currently on hold, but that is definitely something we are trying to continue. Okay. Great, thanks, Hart. Uh, Kamlesh? So I think Tracy and Hart, like what Arun is mentioning and saying, I think I, I can relate because I can also keep traveling to different universities in India as a speaker, as an event partner, but uh, everybody everybody understand the public blockchain ecosystem like Polygon and other stuff, but when come to come to the topic of the hyperledger kind of ecosystem, so even like still uh, the education and awareness is missing. So maybe for that front, like what the Arun is also saying, like uh, how we can create and uh, talk about the hyperledger ecosystem in uh, some kind of developer ecosystem kind of events. So because like all these public blockchain communities out there and talking about and building some developer ecosystem, but in hyperledger perspective, uh, as a hyperledger ecosystem goes to the different event, but in a different aspect kind of talking about the hyperledger hyperledger ecosystem and uh, hyperledger business perspective but involving the developer ecosystem part i think could be focused in not just universities but in general uh, to the developer ecosystem all right thanks Kimlish. bobby Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I just wanted to supply that in the learning materials working group in the new year is working with David to um, change up an onboarding site or onboarding mechanism so that when people do inquire, there are the inf there is the information that they're requesting really easy for them to find. And then possibly um, we were talking in the group about running classes based on um, just what Hyperledger does. Um, during our meetings like monthly so that people who are interested will get the information. That sounds great, Bobby. Any other comments on this topic? All right, uh, any other topics then that we should talk about before we close out today's meeting? Hart? Awesome. I will briefly say that, uh, you know, just in, in this same vein of soliciting feedback, uh, we are looking together, sorry, we are looking to put together our events strategy for next year. Uh, so if you all think that, you know, there's an event that might not be on our radar that we should attend or have a presence at or, or try to speak at or do something, uh, please, please reach out and let us know. All right. Thank you, Hart. Thank you, Tracy. Any other topics? All right. Sounds like there's none. Uh, so with that, we will close out today's meeting. Thank you all for your participation, and uh, we will see you again soon. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Tracy. See you guys.